Um, so I want to welcome uh, Anna Solner, who is the uh, communications director for Reddit. Um, Anna has a, a, a illustrious past. Um, uh, she worked for Senator Dianne Feinstein in Washington, then was at uh, the US Department of Treasury, then uh, headed off to Hong Kong to work uh, for Martin Lee, who is the head of the pro-democracy movement uh, in Hong Kong. Um, came back to the U.S. and was the first staff members for the Center for American Progress, where some years later, when I joined the Center for American Progress, we met when Anna was uh, based in Los Angeles, and I flew out there, and she met me at the airport, where we did a bunch of meetings all day. And I tried to return the favor last night by meeting her at the airport here, but she got stuck in Newark, and so we're very happy, we're grateful she made it here, given the travail she went through. New Hampshire is much nicer than New Jersey. Just FYI. She knows how to play a crowd, <laughs> too, you know. Um, so after that, after uh, she was uh, at the Center for American Progress for some years, she uh, became the VP for Communications for the Motion Picture Association of America. And uh, again, now she's at Reddit. Uh, I'm skipping over some things. She was the co-founder of a Get Out the Vote effort. She was the found, a founding member of Generation Conservation. And she finds somehow time to do a lot of cool stuff. So welcome, Anna. Let's give her a hand. Because she, she, she had to spend last night in Newark. So, um, <laughs> So maybe you could just, for some people here, tell us what Reddit is. Sure. Um, so I have a quick survey for the audience just to better understand how much Reddit literacy I need to do uh, this afternoon. Um, how many here would call themselves Redditors? Oh, good. Awesome. Fantastic. Um, well, I'm glad to see that there are some Redditors sprinkled throughout the audience. How many of you are only vaguely familiar with Reddit? You've maybe read about it in the newspaper or online or something like that. Okay. Michael, that's well, not I've true. Been on because it. Well, you've but been I'm on not a Redditor. Redditor you know, okay. but I, but you, there's, I, but there's I many different levels. Yeah, I'm a, well, yeah. maybe I'm a low level Redditor. Okay. <laughs> yeah, he's a lurker. That's totally yeah. fine. I posted. I have posted. I, I was a lurker for many, many years. Mm, okay. um, so, um, so it, when you ask what is Reddit, I mean, the reason why I'm, I'm asking you all these kinds of questions is because I think in some ways Reddit is the largest sort of secret society that ever existed um, in the sense that um, we are a huge online community. We're actually a collection of communities. So there are approximately 140,000 active communities on Reddit um, from everything revolving around woodworking to uh, movies to very obscure um, types of um, martial arts to Donald Trump to makeup. So pretty much anything you're interested in, you will find a very vibrant community on Reddit. Um, and because of the scale, oftentimes they are amongst the largest communities online for any of these types of things. So we're very proud that we have one of the largest collections of, of kind of women talking about women's issues. It's a um, community called um, um, two X chromosomes. Um, and so because of that, I think people get a little bit confused who aren't necessarily familiar with what Reddit is, is because they think it's kind of a monolithic thing. And really, it's not a monolithic thing. It is, it is a collection of many different types of people from all different walks of life who are talking about everything. Um, and I think the other kind of unique factor about Reddit is that there's a lot of self-governance on the site, meaning each of these different communities that I was just talking about is governed by, there are the kind of Reddit overall terms of service, which I'm sure you're all familiar with, rules of the site writ large, but we try and kind of not have many of those rules because each of the communities themselves have their own community standards by which they operate. And so those can be very loose 
or they can be extraordinarily strict. So for example, in some of our science communities, so we have one of the largest um, communities devoted to science, r slash science, um, they actually, in order to comment sometimes on the different threads, you actually have to be a legitimate scientist and you have to be vetted by the moderators in order to participate in those conversations. So, um, so it can be that level of strictness to pretty much an anything goes um, kind of, um, of language. Um, some allow swear words, some don't. Um, all different kinds of content um, variations across the different communities. Um, and as a result of the fact that um, the moderators and the users have a very active role and um, very actively participate in, in Reddit and in their individual communities. Um, I would say that that what has I've you know I've personally have had a career that has been very oriented around public policy and governance, um, and so that actually has translated very well coming over to Reddit because of the nature of the way in which the site itself is governed. Obviously, we have a corporate structure; we are a real company; we have employees, etc. However, um, what is very interesting is the way in which we engage with our users and with our moderators in the sense that um, when we are doing product updates or updates to the site um, and kind of different use cases around the site, um, there's an active engagement. Our CEO is on there constantly, actively engaging. Um, users send him feedback all of the time, um, which we get to hear about. <laughs> and so, um, so there's there is a very uh, there's very much a sense amongst the community that they um, they get to determine. Um, how the site um, proceeds in a lot of its actions. Obvious, obviously, I think you know, given that we are a company, there's 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 an active engagement between um, updates that we make and um, and that and how the users kind of interact with the site. And so, um, in some ways, it's not fully democratic, but it's quite democratic, I would say, because. Um, because what is interesting as a communications director for this kind of company, there was one slight change to the way in which we were going to do design on the site. And um, some of the moderators and users who are quite keen with the old methodology of the design actually created this whole communications plan and had their community members like calling specific reporters, calling me, telling me not to change the site. So um, I was very impressed because that was like a classic grassroots move, move on their part to um, ensure that they got to maintain kind of their old stylings and, um, and it was effective. So, um, so that gives you just like a little bit of a window into Reddit, but I'm happy to talk through other statistics. Um, according to Alexa, which is um, kind of one of the leading indicators of, of size, um, they consider us to be between fourth and fifth largest in the United States. States, um, just to give you some perspective. In what sort of, by what measure? By uh, traffic and users. Website traffic? Website traffic, right. So, um, number of all websites. Of all websites. So, number one is Google. This is in the United States, I should say. Yeah. Um, number one is Google, Facebook, YouTube, and then we switch back and forth between us and Amazon. Um, so, just to give you a little bit of perspective in terms of the size of the, of the site. So uh, when was Reddit created? How far back does that go? So Reddit has kind of an interesting history in the sense that it's a classic, I'd say, uh, technology startup um, history in the sense it was two guys who um, were roommates at University of Virginia. And their senior year, they went up to Cambridge and heard a guy named Paul Graham give a talk um, who was starting up a, a tech incubator called Y Combinator. And Y Combinator has gone on to help found a number of, of major internet companies, including ourselves and Airbnb, amongst many others. Um, and, and so effectively, they went up there and Paul told them that they should enter the first YC class, which they did. Um, and, um, and so started the company from there. They um, were running Reddit for approximately a year before they got a, um, an offer to sell it to Condé Nast, which they did. Um, I think that if- It's a big if, publishing. But yeah, the big, big publishing, publishing company. company. Um, 
If you all are interested in the history of Reddit, there was actually recently a podcast, How I Built This. Um, it's an NPR podcast hosted by Guy Raz, um, who, uh, um, who interviewed our two co-founders recently. And so um, if, if you're kind of interested in the trials and tribulations of starting a startup, um, I, I deeply recommend it. Um, but you know, they basically decided um, our two co-founders um, are Steve Huffman, Alexis Ohanian, and um, Alexis in particular had had a number of personal issues. He, um, he had a girlfriend who um, had an accident, was in a coma for a period, and his mother d had cancer and died during this, this year. And so, um, and they were 23 years old, and, and they basically figured out that they probably needed a little more management experience in order to really <laughs> make a go of this thing. So they sold the company um, and still were involved for a couple of years, and then eventually um, went on to other projects. Alexis wrote a book, Steve started a new startup, um, and then, um, there was different management um, and kind of tumultuous periods for the company. So some of you may be familiar with um, some of the witch hunting that went on in the site in um, during the Boston um, Marathon bombing situation. So the site kind of had a number of witch hunting of, and just so um, so during the um, the the kind of hunt for the the marathon bombers, there were some active members of the um, Reddit um, community who were trying to suss out and figure out who may have perpetrated the crime. And, um, and as a result, they really, um, they kind of fingered the wrong man, unfortunately. They, um, they thought it was um, the student who um, who actually had committed suicide as opposed to who actually perpetrated the crime. And so that was, that was one of several kind of moments in the company's history in which they had to really reflect on, you know, the kind of behaviors on the site and what was going to be allowed on the site versus what wasn't going to be allowed on the site. And so effectively, um, after that circumstance, there was decision made that there was no longer going to be any doxing, which is revealing personally identifiable information slash witch hunting on the site. Um, so uh, that was one what issue that occurred. Another was um, there was a massive celebrity photo hack, if you recall, um, and then that um, that actually um, resulted in a different kind of rule change against involuntary sexualization. Some people call it revenge porn, um, and um, so that brought about new rules. Um, and, and then there was a massive blackout of the site, um, which is not something that you generally want to have with your website that all your communities decide to turn themselves to private. Um, and that occurred in 2015 after some other management issues. Um, and, um, and effectively, that's when um, the current CEO, Steve, came back to the company in 2015. Um, read it for a long time. Its history was very, very small. So when Steve came back in 2015, it was only 65 people um, running Reddit. And now, in 2017, we are approximately 280 right now in terms of employees, um, headquartered in San Francisco with offices in Los Angeles and New York. And, um, and we recently um, had a new financing round, so um, we're still a private company. Uh, so we announced a new funding round with, you know, kind of traditional um, uh, kind of financiers like Fidelity, but along with um, Andreessen Horowitz and Sequoia, which are large um, venture capital firms based in, in California. Um, and so with that new round of funding, it's allowing us to really kind of bring Reddit into the, into the fore in a, in a real way. So really ramp up um, the kind of engineering talent that we have, as well as a lot of the other teams that are required to help Reddit run. So, you know, having a large community team, a large trust and safety team, um, a number of these different aspects. So for example, I've been at the company for about a year. They didn't really have a communication staff, um, which is insane given Reddit's history. Um, and so, um, so really, you know, bringing Reddit into the modern era um, in terms of, of its corporate structure, as well as really beefing up um, 
the um, the kind of employee base necessary for um, for a, 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 a website uh, of its of its size. Okay, let's uh, sort of turn to kind of the uh, you know sort of the interaction with like politics, news, policy, you know, that whole space. Because I just, yeah. you know, it's very interesting to me how, I mean, all of this is like, you know, certainly in my career, this is like a big change, <laughs> and even in yours. And um, so one thing, I, one thing I wanted to ask about specifically was, I want to get to politicians in a minute, yeah. but in terms of co the communities and the people using the communities, are there examples of them like organizing things, just sort of amongst themselves making things happen without any, you know, I mean, there's no one from the, like, there's no paid person in DC organizing them or anything like that. Is that part of what's been happening? Definitely. So, um, so where do we begin? So there are a number of different ways in which Reddit throughout its history has been very active in politics. Um, so amongst the kind of largest communities on the site, one of them is r slash politics. Um, and, and I also had mentioned the science community. So um, recent, you know, since the election in 2016, one of the, the um, kind of resistance elements, there's, there are a number of different kind of resistance movements that have started on Reddit. And one of the ones that I think many of you may be familiar with was the Science March, um, which took place kind of, it was sort of inspired um, in part by the Women's March that occurred. Um, and because of some of the rule change um, changes, the kind of discussions around the Paris Climate Accords, et cetera, um, that was one of the movements that kind of caught fire on Reddit and then you know clearly spread um, to other social media and mainstream media um, channels. Um, there are um, there's organizing that occurs in all of these different communities around a whole variety of different subject matters. So um, one of the ways that I interacted with Reddit kind of on the other side side is um, some of you may be familiar with Sopa Pippa. I don't know if this is something some of you are familiar with. So that was going, that was legislation actually in um, 2011, 2012, um, that was going to change um, some of the rules around how the internet was going to be governed in the United States. And so Reddit, um, as a community, was very active around this. They've generally, as, as an ethos, I know that I said that it wasn't a monolith, but there are some areas in which kind of the community in general um, is, um, uh, is supportive, so things like internet freedom, um, net neutrality, those issues, um, they're, they're, um, they're very engaged. And so I was working at the Motion Picture Association, which was for this legislation, and it was remarkable to see um, the level of organizing and coordination that was taking place on Reddit um, to kind of push back against um, that legislation, um, which is one of the, it was, it was fascinating to me coming at it from um, the, kind of the um, entertainment industry lens because the entertainment industry has a very kind of in intriguing relationship with Reddit because I think on the corporate side, they find them very irritating and annoying. Um, but on the kind of publicity marketing side, they love it because they're hugely active um, fan communities on the site. So you know, around comic books or around Game of Thrones, any, I can, I pretty much will guarantee that if you've heard a theory around Game of Thrones, it has probably originated on Reddit. Um, or if you're obsessed with Westworld, there's lots of discussions around Westworld. Um, um, so, so a lot of these different um, television shows that are, have, you know, um, elements of intrigue and, um, theories based around different origin stories related to them, those, those are particularly impactful and, and you'll see those on, on Reddit. Um, but to go back to your other question yeah. about organizing, so it really depends on the communities, but yes, you will see interest. I mean, frankly, um, you know, Donald Trump was very active on the site very early on. Um, and I think that 
um, his interest, his followers' um, activism um, related to that particular community was one that was also um, something that you saw. Bernie Sanders was also um, very active. He had a very, um, um, very large um, community on the site um, while he was still running for president. Um, Hillary Clinton, not really active on Reddit, didn't, um, engage, she had kind of one note that she included into her community, didn't really engage, but we can certainly get into kind of those types of tactics and, and, um, and that level of engagement. Um, yeah, so uh, sort of turning to the elephant in the room, so to speak, um, I mean, what do we call this, uh, tweeter in chief? Um, uh, I hope you've done it. Does it hurt your feelings that he's uh, no. tweeting more than being on Reddit now? Okay, so just want to check. Um, uh, I mean, you know, we, we cer uh, on the plus side, we certainly have more insight into what the president is thinking or what he wants us to think than any president in history. Um, uh, you know, on the, other, on the other hand, maybe it's sometimes more than we want to know. Or, uh, but like, I mean, do you feel like that, like is, is, is every, I mean, it's very, you know, President Obama was on Twitter too, but had a different approach. Um, uh, I mean, do you feel like it's now this is just the way it's going to be? It's like, is there a new norm here? Um, so I think if you look at, if you do a comparison um, between particularly the candidates and how they approach social media, um, I think that, that in many ways um, Donald Trump is a social media savant, like it or not. Um, I think the way in which he, he understood the kind of mood of the country um, in ways that I think the um, Clinton campaign didn't fully grasp from a communications perspective. Me, and what I mean by that is um, if you looked at the way in which they use social media, for example, um, Instagram or particularly Twitter, Donald Trump's um, use of it was always in the first person. You always, you know, whether or not, let's just set aside if you like him or not, it was always, it felt very authentic because he was always speaking as himself. Whereas if you looked at Hillary Clinton's um, tweets in particular, it was always in the third person. So it was clear that it was like kind of arm's length, it was kind of one step remo removed. And so there was a very different sensibility when you see how they were communicating to their audiences. Um, when Michael and I were talking a little bit earlier, particularly on the way in which, so the, the Trump campaign actually didn't really spend very much money on traditional advertising. Very active, we'll probably learn more in the coming months about other tactics that were used, but, um, but um, if you look at the way in which they were engaging, so obviously they had a, a massive Twitter strategy, but on Reddit, they effectively used their Reddit community, which was actually quite large and had an audience as large, if not larger, than most cable channels, um, similar to the kind of surrogate operation that you would see presidential campaigns typically engage with for local media, for cable media, for radio, all that kind of thing. So um, given that you're all New Hampshireites and you get absolutely inundated every four years um, during the primary season, you know that you're constantly hearing on your local radio, you've got surrogates for one campaign or another talking about why XYZ candidate is the right person for New Hampshire because of these different reasons. So those are very specific surrogate operations that they base out of their campaign campaigns, either here in their, their state headquarters or back wherever their, their presidential headquarters might be. So I would argue that the Trump campaign used social media, had a kind of similar operation, but specifically oriented around social media. They were constantly feeding their kind of surrogates, the people who um, were kind of talkers for them, into Reddit, doing AMAs, engaging with their kind of most passionate base in a way that um, 
that was very effective for them. And, and unfortunately, for a variety of different reasons, which I don't fully understand, but I nudge my um, old pals from that you know, Michael and I used to work with, many of whom worked on the campaign, with why aren't you on these kind, you cannot, if, it's a, if there's a site that's out there that's you know, the fourth largest site in this country, you can't abdicate that because you think there might be not nice people there. They still were sending people on Fox News. They were still sending people out on, on talk radio. You, you kind of need to show up. And I think that in the kind of after action report, we know that um, for, for whatever reasons, the Clinton campaign didn't necessarily show up in certain places that they probably should have shown up. I would argue that they, they probably, they needed to, they should have showed up at Reddit. Um, and so, and it's very interesting now when I talk to my old pals in DC who are kind of in that political realm, is they're like, do you know, is there like a Reddit consultant that I can engage with? <laughs> and I'm like, you don't need a Reddit consultant. You can just go on there as yourself. Um, or you can, ha you know, find someone, like someone in this audience who's familiar with the platform and they can help you engage. Um, and and I, I think that that Reddit can have some hard, you know, it, it is not very intuitive. It looks like it's from a website from a decade and a half ago because it had the design has not changed in a long time. We're working on that. I recommend the app. It's a lot more user friendly. Um, but um, but I think because of preconceived notions, um, that's one reason why I guess the Clinton campaign didn't show up. Um, but I think that I think. Now we're at a stage where people recognize that they have to show up. Um, when when CAP was, I, I argue that um, the Center for American Progress, which is the think tank where Michael and I were colleagues, when that was starting, um, one of the rules at CAP in commu the communication shop is is we didn't say no. If if you know, kind of conservative talk radio invited one of our folks on there, even though it was a progressive think tank, we showed up. And um, and it may not have been the ple most pleasant experience, but it was it was something that uh, Michael knows that as, as you know from his own personal experience. Um, but um, but it was something that we felt was important. You had to have your voice counted, and you had to be present. And so um, so I think that that's kind of an interesting takeaway. Um, and it's and it's something actually that that I'm just seeing more and more. I'm seeing a lot of new candidates who are running for office. You know, you hear about all these um, candidates who've been very inspired now to run. They're they're starting to show up. Um, quite actively in these communities. Because I think another interesting aspect with Reddit is because you can have these geo-located communities, so like r slash New Hampshire is, is a community on Reddit, or you know, r slash San Francisco, or um, you can be city, state, university, et cetera. Um, people can show up in those communities and have a conversation with the people there. And you don't necessarily know who Whose people what, or what an individual's politics are? You don't know if they're a man or a woman. You don't know um, if they're young or old. Um, but you know that they have a shared interest in a particular place, and they're going to be engaged with that place. Um, and so that, to me, is a very interesting aspect of of having a conversation, right? Um, so. I should take a, take a beat because I want to talk a little bit about the fact that Reddit also, unlike some of our other um, social media counterparts, it has, um, um, we, we have what we call pseudonymity. So you have a username and um, anyone can, if they look at your username, they can see how long you've been on the site, they can see your comment history, they can see what posts you've made, and they can see how much karma you've collected. So for the non-Redditors in the audience, um, karma is basically upvotes, pe things that people liked about your comments, um, they, that will help you accrue karma. Um, and, um, and so as a result of that, you can see um, ha, you know who you're interacting with um, and what they're interested in, um, and so from there, um, you know it allows for a level of engagement where you don't necessarily have to be your empirical self, 
we like to think that people, when they have, they shed kind of some aspects of their identity, um, be it their gender identity, be it their work identity, et cetera, they can kind of be more comfortable and, and have real conversations. That's another kind of unique aspect about Reddit in the sense that we have these, we have a lot of self-help communities on the platform. So if you're going through a divorce, if you um, are an alcoholic and you're seeking guidance um, or just camaraderie, these are places where you can engage. And th that's just, those are the kinds of kind of deeply personal conversations that you can have on Reddit um, in, um, in amongst a group of people who are kind of going through that same shared experience in a way that you probably wouldn't necessarily do on a place like Facebook because, you know, your colleagues might be on amongst your friends or you might have family members where there's, you know, some, you don't want your uncle Larry to know that, you know, you're having these struggles. Um, so we, we think that that pseudonymity is actually a really essential part of the culture of the site. Um, and, and I'm sure you all will have questions around that and, you know, does that lead to more trolling or that kind of thing? And, and I'm happy to discuss that, that as well. Um, but, but that, to us, is, is a really important and fundamental aspect of the site that allows for what we think to be a more authentic human experience. So I want to make sure we get to the audience. I got a couple more questions. Uh, uh, so one, as you alluded to, you don't need a Reddit consultant. And it's just having someone who's been a communications professional in the policy, political, you know, these different environments. I mean, is this sort of lessening the importance of professionalism in, in that environment? Because, you know, you can kind of see how the norms are for Reddit and wing it a, a little more, do you think? or? Um, no, I would actually argue that probably this is one area that will always continue to have a healthy amount of, um, of job prospects. I think there are some people here from the communication school as well. Is that right? I think a couple. Okay. Um, but um, um, what I think is interesting, and, and this is kind of a, a subset of, of what you're asking, um, with, with a lot of these kind of online communities in general, there, there's actually a need for a lot of different kinds of people. Um, I had been mentioning to Michael earlier that um, a lot of people like to chide anthropology majors. I don't know if there are any anthropology majors in the audience right now, but actually we like to hire anthropologists to be in our community team because they have a good sense of of kind of human experience and and being able to kind of understand interpersonal dynamics and cultures, um, and so um, so that's one area that's kind of a, a, a novel twist to an older area of, of interest um, for communications though, and specifically kind of policy or or political communications, that to me is going to continue to exist because there's just a level of finesse and understanding that needs to take place to get your message out. Um, and, um, and also because people don't like to generally talk to reporters themselves, they want somebody else to do it. So, um, but, but I think that, um, but I think that there's also, you need people who are deeply invested in how these different kind of communications modalities work. So, you know, how kind of, what is the, who is, who's the audience that you're trying to attract on Twitter? Because now that you have all these different social media entities, you will tend to find that the audiences are slightly different amongst them all. So Twitter is very heavy amongst elites, I would argue. So reporters. Um, politicians in general, public figures, that sort of thing. So that's kind of, the, you'll have a lot of um, kind of potential lurkers on Twitter, but really the, the leading conversation takes place amongst elites. Um, I would argue on Facebook. Lurker is someone who reads but doesn't contribute. <laughs> yes, sorry. Um, um, and, and then I would argue on Facebook, that's, that's a very kind of direct um, interpersonal um, discussions that are had there. Gen you know, generally, they're within certain kind of audiences. Um, people tend to be a little bit more circumspect with what they're talking about and sharing on there because they're exposed to so many different aspects of, or you know, people within their social network. 
Um, LinkedIn, obviously very professionally oriented. Typically, people aren't going to necessarily spout off about politics. It's going to be very much oriented around their kind of professional sphere. Um, so each one has its own kind of tribe. Um, I would say that Reddit is, is kind of the most broad in, in, of, of all of them. So I, I, the last thing I want to touch on before we open it up is um, so fake news, Russians, you know, I mean, so first of all was, uh, you know, Facebook has gotten a lot of attention for this, for, you know, the kind of stuff that was perpetuated there. I mean, just I'd be interested in your sense of, you know, what are the responsibilities of a social news, a, a social uh, network to monitor the uh, credibility of the, what's on those networks and, and just whether Reddit specifically has been, you know, have you scanned to see whether Russians were, you know, in, were in your space or not? So. so I would argue that all these social networks um, are, are global. So there are Russians on every single one of the social networks because they're typically global networks. Even though Reddit is predominantly it's the Russian government, I would like that's that's a little different than Russians. Just right. to be clear, yes, no, but I I just want to be yeah. clear that that they they are no all... offense to any Russians in the room. <laughs> uh, so 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 I think that there are a couple of different aspects. There, I would argue that there are kind of three different buckets when you're talking about this particular issue. Number one is the advertising issue. So um, obviously, um, Facebook, Twitter, Google, they've been engaging with the Mueller investigators and with um, Congress around um, advertising that occurred. Um, with Reddit, because we are still quite small and our technology is not as, I, I, our ad tech is not as advanced as those. So. Um, Generally, those advertisements occurred on what's called a self-serve platform. So effectively, you can go in there and order ads just like you would place an order on Amazon or something like that. Um, so an individual can just do it themselves. They put up their creative, it goes. Um, with Reddit, our self-serve platform was more um, antique. I don't know exactly how you um, describe it, but we still had a um, human review process. Um, our ads business isn't nearly the scope and size of, say, a Google's or, um, or a Facebook's or even a Twitter's. And so, um, it, so the human review process was still a major aspect of our ads business. And as a result of that, it, it allowed for a lot of the, I think, the kind of junk um, ads that you saw um, not to occur on our platform. Um, and, and so that was, a, I think, a very important aspect. You're seeing there's a reaction now where Facebook's arguing that they're going to hire a bunch of new ad reviewers. Um, um, and I'm sure there's going to be more kind of, they, Facebook has actually like outlined a bunch of different ways in which they're going to kind of recalibrate how they manage um, political advertising writ large. Um, so the ad piece is, is one big bucket. The second bucket is this notion of bot networks and infiltration to try and manipulate either on Twitter, like retweets or likes. Um, for Reddit, it would be voting um, on pieces. So in this space, um, Reddit has, for its history, been dealing with a lot of attempts at vote manipulation and not related to Russians, but like throughout its history, there were lots of people, marketers in particular, or spammers who wanted to get in and try and upvote certain content. So this is because, like, if you have a movie, someone who says something nice about, I don't know if the movie industry ever did this, but a movie, you would want a, someone saying something nice about the movie, getting lots of upvotes and karma. Exactly. Yeah. So, so um, because this has been an issue for Reddit for a long time, um, it's something where we actually, on the technical side, have been very good at like weeding out bad bots or um, manipulation on our site. And then on the human side, in terms of the, the ways in which our communities are organized, both with you know 
human moderators as well as, I would say, skeptical users. Um, most Redditors have a healthy dose of skepticism, which we like. Um, and that means that um, both on the technical side as well as on the kind of human community side, um, if something was seeming not to be appropriate, it would get flagged either by the moderators or by users as, as inappropriate. Um, so, um, so we feel like that dual immune immunity system was actually very helpful for us. Um, but I'd say that in this third bucket, which I think is is really going to be the area that um, that that all of us, not just the tech companies, but all of us need to think about, and that is user generated content, right? So this is this is thoughts and feelings by individual people, not bots or not whomever, but people, be them, be they American citizens or not, um, and posting things that they believe and or things that arguments that they want to make. And you know, that's where you then introduce a lot of the conversations that people are having now around free speech and what is what is appropriate speech and how is that governed. Um, and so, you know, Reddit has generally had a much more open policy when it comes to speech on the platform. Um, um, and I think that, you know, different sites have different rules as to what they determine um, appropriate speech to be. Um, and so that, that third area, I think, is going to be where, is going to be the trickiest of all the different pieces. Um, for people, uh, for all of us to kind of determine what is appropriate or not appropriate. And I say, say all of the us because, um, because certainly, you know, this is an element where Congress has gotten involved. You hear a lot about it in the media. And, um, and I think that this is an area where, you know, right now as a country, there's a lot of agitation because I think we ha are having to continuously confront our values right now as a people and um, and it and it feels sort of uncomfortable but I think that that is is something that is going to be essential as we move forward um, and and though confronting your values is is actually a deeply um, reddity thing to do um, some of the most popular communities on Reddit are fundamentally based around asking kind of difficult questions. And so I think that that's something that, that we're going to be very interested in um, having that conversation. Yeah, I was, yeah. Um, I was actually going to open it up for, I have a couple more, but if people have questions, do you have? So we have one in from, two in from uh, Twitter. OK. Uh, I got a mic here. Uh, the first question in from Twitter was, uh, what is your favorite subreddit? <laughs> mm. um, I don't know if she's allowed to have one. <laughs> no, no. I, so I love um, Nature is Metal. Um, so that is a, uh, it's a community based around mostly photos or videos of weird stuff that goes on in nature. That's very hardcore. It could be that, you know, it's a man being attacked by a um, enormous hawk falcon type of creature. Um, um, or it could be of an ice waterfall that looks, you know, incredibly dazzling, that kind of thing. So Nature is Metal is, is a recent um, favorite. Um, another one that I like, I like some of the nature oriented one, is Heavy Seas. Which, it, which it are photos and or video of um, crazy seascapes. Um, so if, if you like some of those shows that, like around, you know, um, um, crab fishermen in Alaska or that kind of thing, you'll get little vignettes or gifs around some of these things. And, and I, and my, the one other one that I like, and I apologize if there are Trump supporters in the room, but Tiny Trumps is hilarious for someone from my political orientation. And so it's, it's, it's sort of a, a spoof site where there are different like kind of um, infantile <laughs> visions of Donald Trump. <laughs> The next one was a question about whether, given uh, politicians coming to the Reddit space, as you're arguing they need to now, mm -hmm. 
Uh, are you seeing a difference between how women politicians are being treated in that space since the Redditors are anonymous and male politicians? You know, I haven't. Um, so, and we've had a lot of, and it also depends on where they go, right? So um, recently, um, she's not a politician, but I would argue that she's kind of a political figure. So we had Cecile Richards from Planned Parenthood um, do an AMA recently, and you the know, fine AMA. Oh, sorry, and ask me anything. So apologies. So one of the the most kind of popular interactions um, that happens on the site are what are called AMAs or Ask Me Anything, and they can happen there. They generally happen in a community called IAMA, um, IAMA, um, or they, but they can happen throughout the the site in different large communities. And so, um, so typically we have found that um, that there's just so much interest around politics right now, a surge of interest in politics right now on the site that um, that the experience has been good. And and if people are being are being trolly, they'll get downvoted. I mean, that's one of the things is that because you have these moderators of the given communities who care about the community, right. they, they intervene and can shut people down. It's not Reddit shutting people down. So I think that's, so if they're- If you break, break Reddit rules, you'll, we will right. boot you, but if you're breaking that community rule. So that's, that's yeah. That, yeah, so th there's that. And then there's the downvoting and the community as a whole can kind of kick you off the, Island or, or yeah. Um, one thing, just these IMAs, just, just let me jump in with one thing that was interesting you were telling me about is actually, you were saying that elites are maybe more on Twitter, but Reddit, you were, I didn't realize it, but lots of reporters of major, you know, major uh, mainstream media outlets do IMAs on, on it around th things yeah, they've so, written and politicians do it. And, right. Yeah. So um, media partnerships has actually been a big area for us because um, there's a phenomenon called the Reddit hug of death, uh, which is um, is a is what is described as when something you know becomes immensely popular on the site. It, it's known as front paging on Reddit. Um, you know, oftentimes people will go to the website associated with whatever that content is. And so it's called the hug of death because sometimes it can crash websites. Um, and so um, reporters in general really like it when they get a lot of clicks on their articles. And um, Reddit isn't a closed, is, isn't a walled garden. So Facebook is known for being a walled garden. They want to keep you within Facebook and only in that that ecosystem. With Reddit, you know, you're sent off site to read the content and then brought back, you know, you can come, come back in to comment. Um, and so a lot of journalists, um, because news is so popular on the site and politics obviously is very popular on the site, a lot of journalists come in and we have a number of different media partnerships, both with local um, newspapers to national newspapers, so the Washington Post or the Dallas Morning News or other um, newspapers. They'll come in and they'll do AMAs around different news articles that are particularly of interest or investigative um, re reporting that they've done. Or they come just to source stories too. So people are talking about, I don't know, Bitcoin, and that journalist is interested in, in Bitcoin, so they'll go and they'll get um, information. Um, hi, going off of that, I, I'm a communications major, so I'm uh, mainly interested in seeing how like, we catch on these fake news. Like, ever since our election, there's been so much fake news going around, not on just the like, right side, but also on the left wing side. Yeah. So my question being, like. Is there like do you see this a lot where people drag media or like drag these articles from uh, Facebook or from Twitter, bring it back to Reddit, and they try to like debunk it? Or these other journalists that you were talking about are they also involved in the process on Reddit? So the journalists aren't necessarily involved in um, in kind of uh, they they may get asked about fake news, and so they'll give their perspective on that. Um, so on the larger uh, on the larger communities that are devoted to news, so there's r slash news, there's r slash politics on political news, there's r slash world news. Um, they have very they generally have very specific um, guidelines on governance in terms of sourcing, um, and and also they um, they sometimes will not allow certain um, outlets that that are deemed to be um, faulty. 
Um, so I think some of us are familiar with you know things like Sputnik News and that kind of thing. Um, you know, in in the larger news oriented communities, the um, they you know they will note in the kind of margin of their communities on on um, the fact that they will not allow certain outlets that that have been um, deemed to be um, you know fake news. Um, so so that's where you get you do have some kind of clear guidance from you know, community leaders. Um, now, in other communities where they may be more conspiratorially minded, um, you know, they'll allow more controversial content. And in that space, you, know, you kind of need to be aware of where you are, right? If, if you're in r slash conspiracy, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Um, yeah, that was actually one of the things I thought was interesting. We were talking about this earlier that uh, sort of d Facebook or Twitter is just sort of like one big thing, whereas it's very, Reddit's very much divided among communities. So if you sort of don't want to be subjected to fake news, you can join communities that kind of immune, immunize you from that. But if you want fake news for some reason. I mean, whatever, if, you, if you sort of want those conspiracy theories or whatever, you can, you can go off into that community. So the communities are kind of, you know, it's, it's, it's a little different. One thing, let me just quickly, uh, did Pizzagate take off much in, in Reddit? I was trying to remember that. So that was my first week at Reddit. Um, <laughs> Uh, so as a communications person, it was fascinating. Also as somebody who had worked for John, Pit or people familiar with the Pizzagate conspiracy. So it was this theory that there was, um, so John Podesta and Hillary Clinton were running a pedophile ring in the basement of a pizza parlor that I, I used to eat at in Washington, DC. Um, and that does not have a basement. Um, and they do it in the attic. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, so, um, so, Unfortunately, that was, it was, it was a, so that conspiracy theory um, was something that actually um, was kind of a derivative of the hacking of John Podesta's emails. Um, people had read the emails and they believed that there was some, you know, he had, so John Podesta's Italian, he eats pizza from time to time. So he talked about pizza in his emails. Um, and somehow there was allusions to what these different kinds of things meant. It was, it was a bunch of hooey. But um, um, there, was, uh, there was a subreddit that took off um, right after the election around this and quickly turned into, I referenced before, this notion of witch hunting and um, quickly took on those kinds of elements. And, um, and as a result, we intervene and we shut it down um, and ban the community um, about after about a week or so. We had tried to talk to the moderators of that specific community and say, like, you need to stop this, you know, kind of bad behavior where you're trying to, you know, invest, self-investigate these different things. Um, and um, so that's an area in which we reacted very quickly um, because it was clear what was happening. Um, um, and um, but you know, it's still this this kind of strange phenomenon that occurs to this day um, in comments. You know, I, I you know, even though the community was banned on Reddit, there's still comments on Reddit from time to time about Pizzagate. Um, it's all over Twitter. It's all over Facebook. Um, you know, it is it is strangely part of. It continues to be part of this ecosystem. Just to be clear, a guy showed up with guns at the pizza parlor. You know to investigate and save the children. Yeah, I mean, I think this goes back to this question around fake news, right? Um, and and w like definitionally how you think about fake news. So one of the, um, so when this was kind of really starting to foment, um, it was about the same time that um, there had been a couple of tweets from very high ranking, um, Administrative administration officials, me, you know, you can't kind of get higher ranked than um, the national security advisor for the president of the United States, who tweeted about face about uh, PizzaGate. Um, his son, who was his chief of staff, also tweeted about PizzaGate. These are U.S. government officials in the National Security Council who are tweeting this conspiracy theory. So. 
um, you know, it creates an atmosphere where you know, a lot of people who would be following this person um, you know, would assume that the National Security Advisor may have information that other regular civilians would not have. And so, um, unfortunately, you had this kind of strange compounding of, of a conspiracy theory by, by people who, who should frankly know better. Thanks a lot for coming. So we're talking about confronting values. There's crazy conversation, or I shouldn't use that. There's interesting conversations going on these days about freedom of speech and such. Mm -hmm. In the context of Reddit, sometimes, or yeah, Reddit moderators and Reddit staff sometimes shut down certain subreddits. You started off earlier today by describing Reddit as a community that is not fully democratic, but mostly democratic. So this is a comparative politics question mm -hmm. that I think we've built up nicely to. Is Reddit more democratic than the United States? <laughs> no, I don't think I would just go that far. Um, um, so, for example, we we can't, um, you know, the community. I, I I don't think that the community could could vote to say like, you know, Steve, you can't be CEO of Reddit anymore. Um, um, but. But I think that the nature of Reddit and, 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 that, and the respect that we have for our communities, because we know that they don't have to be on Reddit. They have a lot of options. They could, be, they could start their own um, social media networks. They could go to uh, migrate over to others. Um, so you know, we, we acknowledge that they're, they're, we need to create an environment where people feel like they can have healthy, constructive conversation. And, um, and so that means that we have to have a back and forth with them. Um, I think that, um, I think as citizens, we, you generally have a, uh, more power in real life um, in, in terms of, of being able to affect change within your, your in real life community. Now, our moderators and users can have a lot of impact within their communities that can translate into the real world, and that, that happens every day. Um, but I think, I think you, you, need, you need to be active in both spaces. That's what I would advocate for. We got one more. We can squeeze in another one, Amy. <laughs> Can't believe I get the last question. Um, I don't have a lot of experience with Reddit, and, um, but my students and my own kids do, so. Yeah. That's where I'm coming at this from. But I read an article that said um, that um, Reddit is part of um, sort of helping to support the radicalizing of, to, of people in America because there's a group that, can, that talks about that and reinforces those thoughts and ideas. And um, it's kind of a bigger question about social media and where we are in the world and how, where the responsibility of social media is in that space as well as, um, you know, allowing a platform for everything. Is, is that what happens in, in the social media world and, and how far does that go? So can you drill down a little bit more when you're saying radicalization? Because I'm not sure I totally Again, I, understand. Again, I didn't read it because I don't, um, but I just read an article about it. Um, and I guess it's about um, people who believe that the conspiracy theories and all the bad things that are happening in this country and they're gonna take up arms and you know create their own militia and you know really. So yeah. are there all right yeah, that's sort of so, idea. Um, so there had been alt-right communities. They actually, the um, there was a large alt-right community. It was actually banned in February um, because of, um, I think, some of the issues that you're touching on. So um, we have rules against incitement to violence and um, um, and glorifications of, of that kind of violence against others. And so um, in, in the case of, of that alt-right community, that's one of the reasons why they got banned. Um, and, um, and so 
I can't necessarily speak to the rules of some of the other social media platforms because each of them kind of define their um, terms of service differently. But um, but that was an area where we felt like there was um, that the the you know from time to time. Um, the moderators sort of go off the rails or somebody stops being a moderator who maybe was vigilant. And so that's when um, we have our trust and safety team go in and interact. So our community team will be kind of the first line of defense to really negotiate with the moderators, figure out what's going on, why are there rules violations, et cetera. And if they don't, um, if they don't kind of shape up, then that's when we'll go in and say like, you've been warned. Again, it's not a democracy, and you're breaking the rules, you're out. All right, I have one quick thing that, do, just do this briefly so okay. Amy doesn't kill me. Um, uh, we were talking earlier about sort of how governments are just getting back to, you know, I do head the policy school. Yeah, here, so, yeah. Um, so, about how governments are using, like you had a couple interesting examples of how governments are using yeah. this. So, um, so it's interesting. There's a couple of different unique ways in which, um, especially for the public policy students in the room, um, are using Reddit. And again, it goes back to this geolocation. So um, in Canada, um, the Canadian equivalent of the FCC actually engaged um, the users of r slash Canada around a conversation around their kind of equivalent of net neutrality. And so that was like a very interesting way in which they were able to engage kind of, because the, the Canadian, the, Canada is our second largest market after the United States. And so they were able to get a lot of, of information and feedback from kind of everyday citizens around those rules. Um, and um, and, an, and another thing, area which I thought was really interesting is the Seattle Police Department. Um, they actually have done a, a number of AMAs um, over the span of, of, of months and years around different aspects of how they police. And so effectively kind of going around the police department and, and with different specialists. So they had their hostage negotiator on there. They had the um, detective who leads human trafficking in um, Seattle. Um, I think it was a really, you know, obviously there's been a lot of discussion around policing and police forces in the country. And this is one way in which the Seattle Police Department decided that they wanted to engage with the community is by talking through um, and allowing for a very kind of personal interaction between their staff and kind of the people in their community. And it was, it's actually been a really interesting um, kind of journey for that police department. So, you know, they had one of their forensics guys kind of, you know, debunking some of the things that we might have learned on CSI. Um, and, um, and just in a bunch of different spaces on, on you know, how they work, um, what kind of resources they have, um, et cetera. So just a few examples of ways in which, you know, um, policymakers and or local and national governments use, use Reddit. Great. So thank you very much for coming. Thank you all. Anybody who has more questions, we're doing this again at 3S at 7. So show up <laughs> a half hour late for the Q&A if you have questions, and you can ask questions then. Um, all right. Thank you, Anne. Thank you.